Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching us at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream speed run. This week is pretty cool because it, we're not gonna do a workflow per se. We're gonna dive into component development, which powers the actual pre-built actions and triggers that you see in Pipe Dream. And while we're at it, we're going to use the brand new Git pod powered component development environment which means you want to install any dependencies on your machine, you have to configure your machine, you just open a URL and you're ready to start coding components. For the first time ever in a speedrun history, we're not opening up a brand new workflow to start. We are opening up my fork of the official Pipedream HQ public repository. This is because this is the actual starting point of creating a Gitpod environment. So you wanna watch my other video I released the other day that shows you how to configure your Gitpod environment with one environment variable. But after you've done that, you're ready to start with this video. So what we're gonna do is actually look at our URL here and just add gitpod.io with a forward slash and a hash bang character and hit enter. And voila, you're creating a new workspace. Now what this is going to do is install the PD or Pipe Dream CLI tool right into the environment and have this nice VS Code interface right in the web browser without having to install anything. You could do this from a tablet, you could do this from your phone, you could do this from a computer. You probably could do it from a refrigerator, but I digress. Once the Git pod environment has loaded up, you can actually use the PD CLI tool right in the terminal in the web browser. So I'm gonna just type PD list and just list all the components that are active on my account and we can see my account's authenticated, everything's good to go. Now the goal of this brand new component is to build a pre-built action that allows us to interact with the attachments on a workflow. So you can actually upload attachments to a workflow and there's a special way to access them in the Node.js code, but it would be just great if we could instead read that data with a pre-built action. So we're gonna build that in a couple lines of code here. First things first, we need to navigate this directory we're in. This is the public repository, and all of the components that are built for the pipe dream public registry are within the components directory. So I'm just gonna show you, it's listed out here. I'm gonna create a quick directory called attachments. This is the fake app that we're creating, it's just attachments, because it interacts with the attachments on your workflow. And I'm gonna go into it, and to create a component, all you need to do is use the pd init command. The next argument is to choose between an action, a source, or an app. We're creating an action in this case, and we're going to say, we're just gonna call it read attachment. It's pretty simple to remember. And that will go ahead and create a brand new directory called read attachment. Within that directory, there is a file, and that has our component code within it. Now I wonder if I can just use the open command here or code command on the read attachment. Uh, yeah, you can, Gitpod is awesome. Okay, so now we have the code within our v VS Code instance here, and you can see it looks really similar to a Node.js code step because it, it really is a Node.js code step in a lot of ways. It has a run function, it has props, it has the dollar sign passed into the run function. So now I can define basic props required for this component to function properly. I'm gonna open up the props object here, and the only prop that we should, be, we should be concerned about is the path to where the attachment file lives. So I'm gonna call it path, and I'm gonna say it is a string type, because a path is typically a string, and the label is path to attachment, and I'll just give it a quick description. I'll just say that uh, use the steps.trigger.context attachments to find the path to your file. And yes, there is markdown support in the description attribute, which is pretty nice. So we're gonna head back over to our workflow and I'm gonna go ahead and add an attachment to it. So if you go under the settings area and if you go down to this bottom portion here, you can drag and drop files or browse for files. And I have this lovely picture of me, which should be great material for attaching. We'll just upload it here. Then we'll go back to our inspector and we'll actually edit this workflow. I'm gonna add a Node.js code step just so we can visually see the, the path. 
to give you an idea of what this looks like. So we're going to do console.log. Once again, that path we were talking about, steps.trigger.context.attachments. And just console log what that looks like. And here you can see an object with the key as the file name, and then the value is the path to the attachment within your workflow's environment. This is what we need to pass on to our component. This is a very simple component. There's, there's a better way to show objects and options, and I'll show you that in future videos. But for now, this will be a simple, just accept this value here as the argument to the component as a prop. Heading back to GetPod, we're going to then assume that a path is given, is required by default. So this dot path is the path to the file, and we're going to we're going to use the built-in file system module with Node. We'll import fs, which means file system, from file system, and we will re use a special module called read file sync. So return fs read file sync this path that returns a buffer which then we can turn to a string and i'm just assuming for this example only the only files we're going to add to attachments are images but if you're using csvs or pdfs you might not want to base 64 encode so just depending on your use case i wouldn't I may, you may or may not want to do this but in this case i'm going to encode it to base 64 so that way you could upload it to Google Photos, for example. And that's it. So now we can go ahead and publish this to our Pipedream account. And we can do that by using CLI tool. Let me clear out this history here. PD, publish, read attachment, the MJS. And this will publish it to our account. You can get the success message. You can see version 0.0.1 .0 was published and it should be available under our account now. What I'm going to do is add a new step here, go to the My Actions app. This is where all of your private actions are stored. And we can open this, and sure enough, there is a read attachment action within our account. And you can see my nice little description with the markdown, and the single prop is path to attachment, which then we can use the steps, open two brackets to mean to interpret this using JavaScript, steps dot trigger dot context and what was the exact line here this right here this is the key in the object and i will just reference it like this hard code it now we should be able to test this and return our file as base 64. oh i realized my mistake here i forgot to add the attachments path probably would help to actually dive into the attachments and then provide the single attachment name that we're wanting the path for. And we've looked at our exports, this big, huge blob of characters. This is the base 64 encoded string representing the image. And now I can use this to upload to Google Drive or upload Google Photos, Dropbox, post to Reddit, a bunch of other options. And that's it. That is a component built with maybe three lines of custom code and actually use, useful in your workflows to connect other pre-built actions with. This gives you a small sample of what's possible by building and publishing your own components for reuse across all of your workflows in Pipedream. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do wanna see more component videos, just let me know. I can build workflows, can build components. We could do anything with these speed runs. Have a great day.